What's My Line? Brought to you by Diet Delight, the delicious low-calorie canned fruit. And now, let's all play What's My Line? Let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you. And now, one of the brilliant stars of the comedy hit Love, Mr. Larry Blyden. Now, I get to introduce a beautiful young lady who, on her midterm examinations at USC, made the highest grade ever scored in Mandarin Chinese, Mrs. Steve Allen, otherwise known as Miss Jane Meadows. Shay Shay, Larry. Go away, Shenzhen. Go away, Nushu. Shenzai, Iga, Pangyo, Mei Guoren, Hanyo Isa, Han Sung Ming, Wada Hao Pangyo, Bennett Sir. And happy Easter to you, too. <laughs> well, here's a man who's not only a famous panel moderator, but a distinguished pogonologist. And that's a word you come across if you read Time magazine carefully enough. John Charles Daly. And that just shows you that you can never live down the sins of the past. As a matter of fact, I haven't been on a pogo stick for years. <laughs> and now, Miss Jane Meadows, if you will. Yes? It's nice to welcome you back to the panel, but uh, for reasons which are special and reasonable, and which will be clear to you later on, you must prepare to put your mask on. The rest of the panel does not have to, Mr. Blyden. Nice to have you on the oh, panel. As a matter of fact, we're playing some games because you're with us tonight, as you've noticed. We've got some very interesting occupations, some of them special. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program. But right now, it's time to meet our first contestant. If that blindfold is all in place, is it, Miss Jane? It certainly is. All right, well, our first contestant enter and sign in, please. X. Right? <laughs> and I must say, very fine handwriting, too. Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs.? Well, we're not going to tell the panel where you're from, so let me just, Mrs. X, present you to our panel, if I may. And then if you'll join me over here, please, ma'am, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right, we can tell you that Mrs. X is salaried and deals in a service. And since we put you to so much uh, special action, I think we ought to start things with uh, Jane Meadows. Well, now, I don't recognize the voice, but can I trust the fact that it is a woman? Yes. And you deal in a service? Yes. Is the fact that I am blindfolded because perhaps I have availed myself of your services? Yes. Is this something that you have done for me or to me recently? <laughs> yes. Would it have been... Well, it couldn't have been today. Would it have been in the last week? Yes. Is this something that you did for me in California? Yes. Did it have anything to do with either my hair or my clothes? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. 
Were you are you associated in a professional way of any kind with Miss a Miss Jane Meadows? When you speak of a professional way, we will have to admit, Bennett, there is a relationship here. A service has been purveyed, purveyed, but when you say professional, you mean in a theatrical... Something to do with business. either her theatrical or television career. Mm -hmm. Specifically as a professional career. That no. would be two down and eight to go, Miss Fred. <laughs> well, now, that, all, that would rule out any career of Miss Meadows, because she's also in the travel business. In the show business, yeah. That, and the, you can do the travel business, too, yeah. if you want. Uh, is it possible that what Miss Meadows gains from your service is some special knowledge? Nope. You nope. don't teach her anything? Nope. Three down, seven to go, Mr. Blyden. Uh, Miss X, baby. <laughs> Are you, uh, do you do this for anyone besides uh, Jane Meadows? Yes. Uh, do you do this for men as well as for women? When you do this, do the people come to you for it? Or do you go... Uh, I got to say it that way, not. Yeah, people you have to come do... to you for the service. No. In the particular case which we have reference to here, we would not be describing the people as coming to uh, Mrs. X. We'd say Mrs. X goes to the people. Miss Meadows? Ah, oh, something just occurred to me. Now, this has been done for me in California within the last week. Would uh, Mrs. X by any chance be either in the secretarial field or... Do I hear a rumble from the audience? Oh, that's going to be a thunderstorm, nothing, no pity. <laughs> <laughs> may, may I ask, is Mrs. X by any chance one of Steve's and my secretaries? Yeah. Oh! Mrs. Donna Zink. Zink, and she is the greatest secretary in the world. Thank you very much. I nominate her for that. I wonder, you've really been with, with Steve. I have to say something in behalf of my own, Jane. You mustn't do so that. So do I. Oh, so she's one I'm of the greatest. Sure of well, I'm not going to get caught out on this limb no, all I by myself. I have a wonderful secretary, don't too. Don't you think I'm generous letting my husband have such a beautiful secretary? I do, indeed. And Steve's you've son. been with Steve since, what, 1959? 1959. I notice uh, you're that she comes to New York when you do. Yeah. <laughs> well, what particularly tickled us, Jane, was, as you know, Mrs. Zink is on... Uh, TV yes. as Steve's secretary in, a, in one of the TV commercials, yeah, which I remember commercial. seeing in the last uh, week or so. Really? so you <laughs> yes. were you were uh, professional in that degree, but we wouldn't admit that you had a professional <laughs> career. Oh, otherwise. you were on television. Yeah. Yes, well, she's now. in a commercial. But it was a one shot. This yes. is not a career as such. This was something yeah. that uh, yeah. Mrs. Zink did particularly and specifically as Steve Allen's secretary. So you can't get me on that one, Bennett. <laughs> Pogo Gallagher or Watson. Pogo <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Thank you very much, she Mr. Zink. Nice to be with you. We'll have another contestant for you in just a moment after... Now to meet our second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Aldora... Mangini. Is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs. Mangini? Mrs. Mrs. Mangini, where are you from? San Lorenzo, California. San Lorenzo, California. That's yes, middle of the state, right? Yes. North of San Francisco? Mm -hmm. Good, fine. All right, Mrs. Mangini, may I present the panel? How do you do? How do you and now, would you join me over here, please? And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. we can tell you that Mrs. Mangini is salaried and deals in a product and we'll begin things with Arlene Francis. Mrs. Mangini, is it a product that I might know something about? Uh, yes. Is it now or has it ever been alive? Mm. <laughs> uh, I 
think we have to say no to that because we, we have a specific reference here to uh, actual mobility as a matter of living. Mr. Blyden? Uh, is this product used by men and women? Ah, uh, yes. Is it uh, more likely to be found in the home? Ah, uh, yes. Is it uh, a solid? No. Well, uh, we got a little, yeah, sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, we, there's, uh, we got to admit it one time or another. It should be, anyway. <laughs> Uh, it is sometimes solid, but generally it is not found in a solid state. Well, let me say this, that when we refer to it, uh, mm, when we refer to it, we <laughs> likely in its initial terminology refer to it in terms which mean it's solid. This does not, however, rule out the possibility that in other uh, contexts we might have to say that uh, some elements of it were not as solid as they might be. What are the <laughs> It isn't easy to do this, is it? <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, is it uh, small enough to be held in the hand? Uh, yes. Is it more likely to be found in one room of the house than another? Mm, yes. Is that room that it's found in more likely to be the kitchen? Yes. Is it useful in nature? Yes. Uh, is it something that's more likely to be used by a woman than a man? even though both uh, might use it. I would say, with your permission, that I think it's likely, this does not rule out many men use it, but I think it's likely that uh, in the majority of cases, the woman is the user. And it is uh, utilitarian. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, does it have to do with uh, cooking in any way? Yes. Is it an instrument uh, that is applied to the thing to be cooked, or the thing to be cooked is to put in it of that sort of thing, rather than the, the object to be cooked itself, is what I mean. That's right. We figured that's what you meant. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Meadows. <laughs> Mrs. Mangini, when this product is used, is it consumed? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, well, I would say this, that ultimately we would agree. Yeah, Mrs. Mangini is giving you... Um, a qualified answer because there are phases of use here and yes. it's possible that you might use it and not consume it but prepare it for another phase of application. However, it could be consumed directly too. Thank you very much. Sir. Is it a food substance of some kind? Yes. A food. Can this food be used at any meal? Yes. But is it more likely found or used at one meal than another? I think so. I would think so. Would the meal that it is more likely used at be breakfast? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then would this by any chance be in the egg? Would it be an egg? Yes. It is an egg. It is an egg. Now all you have to tell us is what Mrs. Men Jeannie does, does with eggs. does with eggs. Yeah. Besides cooking them. <laughs> well, you don't lay them. I know that. No. <laughs> Well, now, of course, today is Easter. Is it something very special that you do to eggs, or do you just raise them? Raise, I mean, chickens. <laughs> no, no, it's not raised. That's three down and seven to go. Well, it's not special. In other words, it is not used just at Easter or some other holiday time. Is That's that correct? Right. Do you have anything to do with the eggs before they are consumed by the ultimate eater? Mm. Yes. Do you have something to do with the eggs at the time they are hatched? No. no. Four down and six you to hatch go, an egg? I don't know when you hatch an egg. I didn't oh, you do? You can hatch, you hatch it. eggs to get chickens. <laughs> <laughs> My little beardless poganologist. <laughs> you do, however, deal directly with the egg, do you? Yes, yes. sir. Uh -huh. And uh, it has nothing to do with this season, what you do? No. No. Do you separate the smaller eggs from the larger eggs, or the brown eggs from the white eggs? No. Or the good eggs from the bad eggs? <laughs> that would be better. <laughs> That's uh, an egg you laid. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Blyden. When this egg arrives at this kitchen, have you already done whatever it is that you do to it? No. You do it in the kitchen, do you? What kitchen? Six down and four to go, Miss Meadow. You oh. do it after 
the egg arrives in the kitchen? No, No. we just asked whose kitchen. That ought to take you off that one. Whose kitchen you do this in? Mm. (laughs) Give you 30 seconds. I haven't the vaguest idea. Do you, Bennett? No, unless... uh, Do you work in some kind of a restaurant or... uh... No. No. Does she crack the eggs into something for somebody? Crack is close. Great thing. (laughs) This will probably explain it, Larry. Mrs. Mangini works for the R.W. Thayer Company in Oakland, California, and she breaks 22,500 eggs a day. What do you do? Why do you do that? Which eggs are then frozen and are delivered to the bakeries and mayonnaise makers in the, what we call the Bay Area of San Francisco, which is a vast complex of communities which lie about the Bay. We like to think of San Francisco as uh, a suburb of the Napa Valley, but uh, (laughs) that's all right, right? How do you break them in a machine? Throws them at the... I break them by hand. Just, Just squeeze them. No, like no, no, no. Oh, Bennett, now no. come on, squeeze them. <laughs> <like that. laughs> now, what do you, I guess you break them in the over? Do you do you crack them over the edge of the thing and then? No, we uh, break them in a pan. Uh huh. So, what do you crack the egg on the side of the pan to bust yes, it? Yes. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And then just, what do you do with the shells? This ought to get interesting. Well, we have a special uh, container where we throw the shells in. Ah, you can't even throw those over your shoulder. No. No fun at all. (laughs) Well, but it's a very interesting day, and and, uh, I must say that uh, you egged our panel on beautifully. Thank you very much. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this message. And now, this special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which the panel is always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Would you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? As you know, panel, in this instance, a different form of questioning. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we'll begin things with, uh, Bennett Surf. Well, if this isn't a beautiful girl, there are some very false whistlers in this audience. <laughs> are you a beautiful girl? Ah. Uh. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, Miss Francis. Thank you. Are you best known for your work in motion pictures? Mm, perhaps, yes. Mr. Blyden. Uh, are you appearing on Broadway at the moment? Yes, I am. I thought you were. Miss Meadows? Oh, dear. Who is appearing on Broadway at Lots of people. <laughs> Somebody from Motion Pictures. Are you a blonde? Yes. Mr. Sir. Are you appearing in a show that has music in it? No. No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Are you, prefer- are you performing in a straight play? Yes, I am. Mr. Blyden. Uh, are you, uh, can I, can I hazard one? Sure. Can I go for it? Are you Lauren Bacall? No. N- no. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Meadow. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> that accent's very misleading, isn't it? Mm. You are an American star, aren't you? Yes, I am. Mr. Surf. In the play that you play in, have you got a certain affliction? (laughs) Yes. Ah, Ah, Miss Lee (laughs) Remick. Well, Larry, you may not have had the right person in mind, but you opened the door very wide. I'm very flattered. I love her. Wait until dark is the uh, play in which Miss Remick is starring at the Barrymore Theater, which always tickles me. Oh. The Barrymore Theater it must be a wonderful. Oh, it's beautiful! Be I love it. Yes. And, uh, and she plays a blind girl. I do. Yep. Beautifully. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm enjoying it. It's great fun. I'm looking forward to seeing it. We haven't seen it yet. You must come. It really is fun. People scream and they 
wonder, and they like to figure out the puzzle, and it's great fun to I do. I don't know what, because I didn't get to see it, but I understand at the very end there's something that's just happening. Yes, there and is. Nobody will tell me what it is. No, they shouldn't. Why don't you call the police in that show? That would oh. cost you. Oh, very important reason, which I can't tell her. I'd give it away to everybody. Spoil the whole show. Very they're important. A great, <laughs> they're, <laughs> yeah, they're a great bu bunch of diggers and chiselers. Pay no attention. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Miss Revick, nice, nice to have had you with us. Well, you've done very well so far tonight, panel, and we'll have another contestant after this word. Now a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Marguerite Keller. Right, ma'am? Is it... Uh... Miss or Mrs. Keller? Mrs. Mrs. Keller, where are you from? I'm from Lakeland, Florida. Lakeland, Florida. Mrs. Keller, may I present the panel? Now, would you join me over here and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Keller is salaried and deals in a service. And let's begin things with Larry Blyton. Uh, Mrs. Keller, this service that you perform, do you perform it for men and women alike? Yes. Do they come to you for this service? No. That's one down and nine to go. Miss Meadows. When you perform this service, Miss Keller, do you, are you dressed as you are now? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Keller, do you work for a non-profit making organization? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Mrs. Keller, you're a handsome and seemingly very strong girl. Does your work require dexterity? Yes, it does. Would you be considered in some way a performer? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Blyton. This service that you perform, you go to them then, hmm? To the people, right? Uh, do you touch them in any way when you, when you perform this service? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Meadows. But strength is involved in it, is it, as well as dexterity? Somewhat, yes. Somewhat. To a degree, but not to such a degree that you should spend too much time on it. Uh, would it be an athletic uh, service of some kind? Would athletics be involved in it? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Keller, does your work in any way involve animals or farm products? No. What did you just say, Bennett? Uh, animals or farm products? We will agree, Bennett thinking over the question that you asked, that it is possible that the work that Mrs. Keller does could involve animals or farm products? Well, by, by the, I presume you mean farm products might be a term used to this. Is that right? We will accept that the work that Mrs. Keller does could perhaps be involved with farm products. Uh, is, is there something to do with the orange industry? Yes. Uh, I know there are millions of beautiful oranges produced around your territory. Have you something to do with packing or shipping these oranges? Yes. Well, you're just an orange grower. No. no. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis? No, packing or shipping. Um, do you manage to take the oranges from one place to another? Right. Are you I'm an orange truck driver? Oh, no. no. <laughs> truck driver. Are you? And I got all the tides over first. Now, Mrs. What? Keller is employed by the Clay Hyder Trucking Company and works as a team with her husband and drives a big 65-foot tractor trailer. And congratulations, ma'am. That's a Merciful. real big job. Nice to have had you with us. Jane, it's nice to have had you with us, and Thank Larry, you. Thank I you. hope you enjoyed your first visit, and good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night. It was nice to have you with us, too, John. <laughs> Thank you very Good night, much. Larry. It was lovely. Come back. Thank you, Arlene. Good night. Good night, Jane. Good night, Larry. Good night, Bennett, good night, and happy Easter. Ch Chinese specialist. <laughs> Bet you a one egg Mrs. Mangini couldn't open. <laughs> good night, John. <laughs> That's better than being a hard nut to crack, and thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Life.
Watch My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Thompson. This is Johnny Olson speaking.